Hello and welcome back to Fat Boss TV. Today we're having a look at Cornbrock on the 6.2 PTR in the Hellfire Citadel. Yes, and this boss is pretty simple. He hasn't got too many mechanics, but he does empower his mechanics throughout the fight and it can get really, really hectic. So yeah, you are dealing with the same like three or four mechanics throughout the entire fight, but because they are constantly changing and all that, it does actually make for a really, really cool encounter. He's in a nice big room with horrible pools around the side. If you stand in them, you instantly die. It's pretty goddamn yeah, cool. So, yeah, excellent encounter. Really cool fight. Now, as a quick disclaimer, this is a PTR preview. This is not an official Fat Boss guide. An official guide will be coming out as soon as these bosses hit live servers. So everything that you're watching right now could be different. But we're going to go through it anyway, and we're going to show you how this boss works. So the boss has four main abilities that the raid needs to deal with, and one of which is the Pound ability. Now, this just deals a large amount of AoE damage to the entire raid. Around every 60 seconds, this comes in and only lasts for around five seconds or so. But the damage that does go onto the raid is splash damage. So the idea is, is that you are spread out. It's a four-yard radius, so be spread out four yards. Otherwise, you're going to be dealing a ton of damage to everyone else, and it does hit pretty hard. But as it only does come in every 60 seconds, you should, as long as you have free healers, you're going to be absolutely fine just using a healing CD for each one of these. Just make sure it isn't one where you have to be stacked up. The boss also does something called shadow waves, and this just spawns massive globby waves and little baby ones as well that travel across the room. And if you're hit by them, you do take quite a large amount of magic damage, two or three ticks and you'll probably die. And these waves, they're kind of difficult to deal with, mainly because the reason that they're all moving in different directions, they don't necessarily all just go out in a straight line or anything like that. Yeah. And because some of them move slowly, well, they appear to move slowly and other ones appear to move slightly quicker. It can be very awkward to deal with. But um, luckily, with uh, especially in this unempowered form, it only comes from the purple pool, so it isn't too hard to deal with, especially if you're on the other side of the room. You might not even get a wave coming towards you, and if it is only one, just, you know, move from it. Now, the boss does something called explosive runes. Now, these runes will just grow larger and larger, and after 15 seconds, they will explode, dealing massive damage to the entire raid. And because there are, like, what, five or six of them, if they all explode after 15 seconds, that's in pretty much an insta-kill. However, if you do run over these runes before they explode, only one player will take the damage and it is slightly reduced damage. It's like 100k rather than 200k, something like that. And the rune will be removed. So the idea is, is that when these runes come in, just run over them. You can just send classes out there that are good for it. Maybe like a rogue or uh, hunters or shadow priest. But to be honest, if you only do one and there isn't too much other damage coming in, you should be absolutely fine having anyone soak these. And the last ability that the boss could potentially throw out at you is something called grasping hands. And as you might have guessed from the name, yeah, it's it's Chromog, essentially. Yep. What will happen is the boss will just place the entire raid in their own individual hand. And these hands will just root you in place and will start dealing physical damage to you every three seconds. So the idea is, is that you kill them off as, as quick as you possibly can. Now, they have so much health that if the entire raid is spread, you're probably not going to kill them off quick enough. So you kind of need to have the entire raid stack for this just to kill them off however there are some points where this ability comes in very very close to when pound is about to come in so if you don't kill the hands off quick enough and you do have the entire raid stacked you're gonna be taking damage from the hands plus all the aoe damage from the pound yeah as well as all the splash damage from the pound you're so gonna you, get one yeah shot. you're one shot pretty much so the idea is that when these hands come in you quickly stack you just blow them up instantly now they are the main four abilities that the raid will have to deal with however all of these abilities apart from pound will become empowered over the course of the fight giving them extra effects now the way that this happens is that the boss will leap to the closest pool on a set timer and absorb like the energy from it which will temporarily empower one of those abilities depending on what pool it is and then once that empowered like goo falls off of him he'll then jump to the next closest pool but it can't be the same pool so you can't just keep making him jump in the purple pool over and over again he'll go i don't know you go purple pool then the red pool and then the green pool you can't just go between two of them he has to go in like a three round rotation so you do have to deal with all the empowered abilities now when the boss has absorbed the purple pool this will make it so the waves, instead of just spawning only from the purple pool, they'll also spawn from the red and the green pool. Yeah. Which means you now need to deal with three sets of waves that are exactly the same as the ones from the purple pool. You still have the big ones, you still have the small ones, and they still do a shit ton of fucking damage. So to sort of counter this, what we decided to do was stand like towards the like entrance of the room. So we was like pretty far away from uh, the green pool. We were still kind of close to the red and the purple one. Um, I think the best way of doing this, as long as you're not in the middle of the room, you should be fine. Yeah, if you're in the middle of the room, unless you're some sort of crazy tap dancer ballet man, then you're going to probably yeah, die. Yeah, you're going to be fucking dead. Yeah, so. so the idea is just to avoid these pools as much as possible. And during this time, explosive runes and grasping hand doesn't come in, so you do have time to move from it. Or just don't die. Dying, dying is yeah. a DPS loss, so yeah, don't die. 
When the red pool is empowered, this makes it so all the explosive runes, whenever you actually soak them, they'll respawn. Which sounds really, really bad in, in almost as most people when they were testing it thought that you have to deal with them for the rest of the encounter. Now how these runes actually work is that if when they do respawn, they're near other runes, they won't actually respawn. And if there's only one rune left somehow and you soak that, it will then despawn. Now the way that you actually have to deal with it, which took us quite a long time and a lot of other guilds to realize as well, is that whenever you do soak a rune, it will always respawn directly in front wherever you was facing when you initially soaked that rune, which means you can kind of like cattle herd them all together until there's only one left and then you soak it. So the idea is, is that they always do spawn in the circle. You get your entire, well, you get six, seven people to spread out around them and just to push them all together in the middle of the room. Yeah, and eventually they all despawn. Yeah, it is pretty hard to see how that works because the animation for it is so terrible. There's a tiny, tiny animation showing you that when you run through it, it kind of spawns in front of you. But yeah. it's so, so small and so, so difficult to see that I imagine that needs to be, you know, enhanced somehow. But really, it's a very simple mechanic. To be honest, it's one of the easier empowerments to deal with. Just push all the runes towards each other and then they'll just despawn and you'll be a happy puppy. Now, the last empowerment is from the green pool, which is the hands pool. This will make all the grabby hands travel towards pools with players. And as we said at the beginning of the video, these pools pretty much one shot you if you go in them. So it's bad. The idea is, is that you all do stack up in the same place because otherwise it does pull you towards the closest pool so you don't want to all be going towards different pools and you just aoe them down as soon as possible now these cannot be rooted they can't be stunned they can't be slowed or anything like that so you just have to kill them luckily they don't interrupt spell cast so you can still be channeling and all that kind of stuff while you are moving along just kill them off as soon as you possibly can and make sure you are all stacked up so you can aoe them down and you are all traveling in the same direction. Now, when the boss is empowered by a, a uh, pull, he'll also do some extra abilities that your tanks need to deal with. Now, for the purple one, he'll do something called SWAT. This is just a large magic damage hit that will knock you back, and the distance you travel is absolutely incredible. If you're faced towards the middle of the room, you will literally travel across the entire room. It's pretty scary. So the idea is, as a tank, when the boss is empowered by the purple pool, you make sure that you face your back towards a wall. That way, you'll just hit the wall, fall down, and you can come back to the fight as normal. For the red pool, you'll get something called Explosive Burst. When the boss casts this on you, it'll root you in place, and then after a couple of seconds, you'll explode and deal damage to everyone within 40 yards. You could argue it's exactly the same as the Mark of um, Chaos from uh, Imperator Margok. It's the same effect, basically. We're not sure if you can leap away while you're rooted, but you can definitely use like Monk Transcendence, the transfer. You can use um, Druid Blink, I guess that would probably work. You just need to make sure that when you do have this as a tank, either you move or the entire raid moves. And for the green pool, you'll just get a super grasping hand on the tank. Um, this just has far more health. It deals far more damage. You just need to make sure you just free the tank as soon as you possibly can. Yeah, the way that this comes in, it generally comes in after your hands have just spawned. So the idea is, is that you AOE all your hands down as soon as possible. And instead of going back to the boss, quickly free the tank. He's stuck and he's dying and yeah. it's bad. So yeah, free the tank and you'll be absolutely fine. Now, every time the tank is hit by one of these abilities, they'll also get a debuff that increases the amount of damage they take from all magical abilities by 50%. And this does stack. So the idea is you just taunt on one or taunt on two every time one of these abilities does hit you. So that's actually all of the mechanics in the entire fight. You just keep rotating round and round in pools and that's it. You just got to deal with the empowerments and make sure you deal with the tank mechanics properly. However, he will eventually enrage. Now, when he does enrage, he'll get 30% haste and all empowerments that he gets from the pools from this point onwards will be permanent. So that means that say he jumps in the purple pool when he's enraged, all the waves will constantly be there. If he runs in the red one, all of the runes will constantly be the empowered runes and you have to like cattle herd them together and same with the hands and of course if all of these are empowered at the same time i have no idea how you're supposed to deal with that yeah. it's going to be hectic as hell you might be able to do it with timers it might be a little bit easier but generally the idea is is that when this enrage does come in you probably want to say bloodlust for it so you can get through it as soon as possible because it's going to be pretty goddamn vicious um to get through and it is on a timer it's not on a percentage health or at least it wasn't on the ptr so I guess you really want your DPS to kind of carry the fight because yeah. if you can kill the boss before this enrage or get him very, very low when this enrage comes in, the fight will be a hell lot easier for you. But it's a fantastic encounter, even though it has so little abilities. Yeah. But it just shows you you don't need a lot of abilities to make a decent fight. Yeah, it was definitely very fun to play with. One of the stronger bosses that we've seen so far. So yeah, really, really good fight. Can't wait to see it on live. And uh, yeah, good luck cattle herding everyone. So thank you very much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this little preview, then please do drop us down a like. 
And if you'd like to see more PCR previews, there is a link in the description to our playlist and you can see all of those bosses. And when again, we will be doing updated guide versions for this, the official Fatboss guides, as soon as these bosses do hit live servers. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you on the live stream. Thanks for watching.